Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Discover Joyous Love. This is Anita DeFrancesco bringing you episode 21, Relationship Harmony vs. Disagreement. So this is a great topic for this time of the year because a lot of time there's a lot of disagreement with couples, romance, and a lot of areas of your life. So why do relationships suffer? What is one of the main reasons that relationship has, we'll say romantic relationship has disharmony? Now, say you grew up in a chaotic environment, maybe there was a lot of dysfunctional arguing, uh, as, as I did myself growing up in a family where there was much arguing, there was no talking about things, it was arguing through things. And so this creates a lot of um, unmet sensitivities that exist within our, say, our being, our artistic being, or there's a lot of, uh, children will grow up with a lot of unmet sensitivities because maybe they're not seen or heard because there's so much dysfunction and arguing in a family that um, somewhere along the line, that becomes the adrenaline, that becomes the addiction. And so you grow up and you meet someone and you argue your way through. But what 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 is what is failed here is that the consciousness and the awareness isn't there. It isn't built in. It needs to be learned and taught. And that's why we have spiritual trainings, metaphysical work, you know, uh, yoga and different things of that nature, because it teaches people how to become more conscious, more aware of their surroundings, their environment, the feelings in their body, what's going on, the transference we've received. Now that's transference. If you've, say, grew up in a dis- disharmonizing environment and then you become that in your relationships, you're carrying a lot of that transference. So in order to relieve that, remove that, of course you have to do the work. But in this day and age that we're in, there's so much spirituality and metaphysical practices available to us that it's, um, it's pretty easy to to find something to help you get on that path. But then again, you need the consciousness and awareness. So what happens is, is that we can, we can stay as we are and live between that rock and hard place, relationship harmony versus disagreement, or you can find your way and help yourself to become something unique. You can recreate, you can, recreate what you come from and not wanting that you have to make a choice so it's all about choices and again you know we have these strong emotions that go unmet so the tears have been held in since childhood and now it is a time to express okay but in a relationship you want to keep that sacredness because that disrespect i mean that disagreement and the and the relationship Harmony versus disagreement, the relationship disharmony can cause a lot of disrespect within the relationship. So there are friendships and marriages dissolve due to the lack of harmony. And this is one of the main reasons why people get divorced because they don't understand what harmony is. It's there, but they are so beyond the consciousness that they they can't see the light. And it's a shame because they probably still love each other and they and they separate because they don't have this wisdom, this knowledge of wisdom available to them. Um, people, uh, relationships break up because of assumptions, pride, unspoken expectations, poor communication, absent intentionally, And when we assume the worst in people, so one of the things is when you assume the worst in people is is what creates the disharmony. So we need to remove the word assume and just see the good in people because there's bad and good in everyone. And the more you look at your partner in the negative light, he or she does this, they do that, and I don't like this, I don't like that. Why don't you just weigh it out and make a list? Get your notebook out, like I said, make that list and see exactly the positive things that you like about this person. Does that outweigh the negative things, the things you don't like? 
What happens when relationships go sour and arguments creep in? What really happens? Is it a way of just venting out to each other? Now that could be something, or is it a way of creating that isolation and separation and moving further apart, separating from each other? Is that the way you do it? Some people find that arguing their way out of a relationship is the only way that they know. But that keeps a lot of pain there. And that's betrayal because you're not being honest with your feelings. But what does really happen when the relationship goes sour and, and you're not agreeing on anything anymore? Is it because the sex isn't there or the intimacy isn't there or there's something that you're not communicating to your partner that that you want to make a change about? Or is it that you just really want out and want to move on or that you're so bored within this? See, within a relationship, you have to find the space. You have to find the intimacy. You have to find the balance. You've got to go out and still have your own identity and live your life and travel and, and go do things with other people and then come back. It's kind of like separating and coming back, separating and coming back, the push, the pull. And this is what keeps the relationship healthy. You really have to work it. People think it's just love. They meet someone, they're in love and it's going to all, you know, it's all down, it's all downhill from there, but it's downhill in a negative way because if you don't work at it in this day and age, relationships need work. You have to find the time for intimacy. You have to find the time to communicate. Uh, managing your conflict. It's a choice to manage conflict. Remember, we have choices. But then again, you always have one that could be more argumentative, more narcissistic, more egoistic, and the other one is more passive, more empathic. So you got the empaths, the empaths and the narcissist, and the ones who are the givers and the receivers in the relationship. So it's time to rescue your relationship, isn't it? And this is a good time of the year. We've come through a lot the past year or two now, and it's a good time to start to harness in, cultivate that, that, uh, that, that intimacy, that passion that's really there to look at each other, to be honest. We create space for disunity. You wanna create space for growth, not for disunity. You create the space within your relationship so that you can grow more together. First, you grow on your own when you create the space and then you come back and share what it is that has that you grew in the newness of you, what you recreated. It's not about disunity. Disharmony alludes to the fact that we're all so different. Now, keeping in mind, we are all so different. There is no two people that are exactly alike. I don't care how much of a twin flame you are and you mirror each other, you are still, still different. We are all different and different personalities, different. We come from different cultures, religions, backgrounds, um, where we grew up, experiences and our genders and our strengths and our beliefs. What do we believe in? What are our weaknesses, likes and dislikes? So it's in the Tantra wisdom, sacred bubble, we sit down and go through these what we like and dislike about each other. Remember, you never want to change a person. It's always about adapting and adjusting. It's about being the right person for each other, not finding the right person. Everyone's always looking for the right person. What about becoming the right person? That is where you want to be, becoming the right person. As Esther Perel says, now embracing do you find the time to embrace the play and the fun times? Laughter, or is it all about work? Is it all about making money? Is it all about fixing the house? Is it all about the children? Let's tap into that inner child and become playful again and keep that child alive. Disagreement creates unnecessary walls for the fear of our own personal rejection. So when you have more disagreement within your relationship, disagreement about anything, about stupid things, about how, how who should sleep on what side of the bed, who's going to take the trash out, or who's going to eat this, I don't like that, and this. People find all these reasons to not harmonize. Congruency harmonizing is key to any relationship, and I'm going to tell you that again. It's like, be the go along, get along, you know? If it's something major, if it's a problem that can't be solved with money, it's an expense. It becomes an expense. So if it's something that can be cured and dealt with, 
that's very simple and not and trivial, just be the go along, get along. But if it's a big thing, you know, you're going to move out of this state to another state. Of course, you don't want to agree with the person if that's not what you want to do. Now, that's a big thing. So keep in mind, look at the little things and the big things. It's the big things that you should start to, you know, that's where maybe some disagreement will come in. And uh, people really create the unnecessary walls. So let's just have healthy boundaries and no walls. Healthy boundaries versus no walls. It's a natural human tendency to push the other away. We do this all the time. It is very natural to push each other away. It is the human condition to come together and separate, come together and separate. We have natural built-in fears, natural built-in shame. Some of us have a lot more of that because of the foundation we were given. If we've come from a dysfunctional family, divorce, abuse, et cetera, et cetera. But there's always the natural fear and happiness and joy that lives within. Fear is, is, is there for growth. Shame is there for growth. To strive for harmony, you want to move toward each other. But have that push and pull, push and pull. And that's where the fun comes in, the play, embrace the fun, the playtime. That you can actually have this push and pull with your partner and it's fun and you're laughing and, and it becomes intimate and it becomes sexy and it becomes sensual and it becomes respectful. Now, there's always the comic relief. Is it that bad? There's so much comedy out there. You can check out Sebastian Maniscalco. He's one of my favorites. Uh, you know, comic relief is something I had to create within myself growing up in a family where parents argued. My parents argued a lot and it was a consistent, they were so addicted to arguing that I said, the moment I walk out of this house, I'm never going to argue with anyone. And I really strive very, very hard in my relationships not to argue, to just be calm and congruent and harmonizing. And I feel there is no reason to argue, to argue over stupid little trivial things. You know, who's going to drive and who isn't? What time should we leave? And well, I want to leave this time and I want to leave that time. And that becomes a big argument. It's 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 unmet sensitivities and, and unmet trauma in the body that hasn't been dealt with. That's what, what that's all about. So comic relief, just laugh. Find the comic relief in everything. Bonding in play, <clears throat> time opens the senses to authenticity. So if you bond and you have this time for play, you become a little bit more open to your senses, thus becoming more of an authentic person. Embracing the art of prayer and meditation. Again, you know, prayer could be anything. It could be just meditating and thinking positive about something. It doesn't have to be any type of religion. And keeping in mind, yoga is not a religion and it is something that, or Tai Chi, that you do in the meditation of the body, which is considered the prayer of the higher senses. So you pray, you want to, if you pray, you pray for harmony and world peace is one thing that is a good prayer, but because the world is such a disharmonizing place that we're in right now, people are receiving a lot of transference and they're carrying that into their personal relationships with their family, their children, their beloveds. And so we have to be aware of this. Let's become more aware and conscious. And it's hard to stay you know, in that higher power and that awareness, because it's a it's a place that's that's something that you have to go to alone, and that is where the fear lives when you have to go to that place alone. But once you get in that higher power and you grasp that that identity, that uniqueness, that you, that is your truth. Praying for others opens yourself up. So if you pray for others, you have friends that might be sick, or or just in general, they have such a challenging life. When you pray for others, it really actually opens you up to understanding acceptance. Laying down your stubbornness. Opening yourself up to the God's power in that friendship, or the higher power, we'll say, in that friendship. So prayer of any kind, meditation, stillness, silence, relieves bitterness, and pride fades away. So again, that ego, that narcissism, that place of like you're disconnected because you feel that you're better than someone. Allowing the power of the higher power to invade your relationships with a sense of harmony. Oh, 
taking a breath. You're listening to Discover Joyce Love. I'm your host, Anita DeFrancesco, and our topic today, episode 21, is, the topic is, um, where am I here? Okay, um, relationship, uh, relationship um, di- disharmony versus disagreement, relationship harmony versus disagreement, and um, this is a place Relationship harmony versus disagreement. Sorry about that. Um, So you want to plan quality time together. Now, when you're in a relationship and you have children, you're you're strapped down, you're you're held down by work and everything else. Family, maybe you're taking care of your parents or your whatever it may be. You must plan that quality time together because. When you plan, it takes down the walls. It breaks the barriers. Saying yes is positive. Not finding excuses will dissipate because we always find that excuse. There's always a denial. That's denial. Spending time with those you generally don't spend time with. Now, I don't mean to go get all your enemies and start spending time with them, but what I do mean is some people maybe in your family you may not be as close with and you want to break down walls in general because the more enemies you have, the more walls you have, and the less likely you are to have harmony in your life, in your in your most personal, intimate relationships with your family, children, and beloved. The relationship conflict, what is it? Disagreement acts to clear the air and open up the form for discussion. So when you have an argument, when there's conflict, you want to resolve that. It opens up the forum for you to deliberate to come out and find a place where you can throw the dice see where you are in whatever the conflict is there's a lot of control and anger that lives there keeping that in mind intimate closeness can cause arguments so the more intimate you are and close if you don't create the space sometimes that can become you can because an argument because it become too much tension in there breathing sleeping each other's energy so you always have to find that clarity of clearing out the space between you that's when you come back to the tantra wisdom sacred bubble and you clear that space and you find that sacredness that reverence that that you can come back to and and honor and appreciate and when you take it to that higher power that blissful level that is where you see the truth and that is where everything becomes very smooth and fluid moving beyond to compromise there's compromising you don't have to leave the relationship because you don't like what he or she does Uh, there's always a compromise and in any relationship there will be compromises I'm telling you that right now because you're never going to find anything perfect the grass is never greener you have to there's always going to be competition between Uh, two partners though she might be jealous of his success or he may be jealous of hers denial or avoidance smoothing over the problems harmony but burying the conflict you never want to bury the conflict you want to deal with the conflict so this compromise is about meeting your partner halfway meeting them in the middle ground whatever it is and Believe me, if it's something really big that can't be dealt with, then that's a different story. But these little trivial things can be met halfway, can can are compromising. And, and it's just normal. We do it every day without even knowing that we do it. Collaborating, working together to create a shared outcome. Collaboration is a win-win situation. Building on the conflict. Building on the conflict. Having this communication when you're angry, communicating to each other, finding the strategies here. Again, the space, because anger will surface. It will surface all the time just from walking down the street every day, driving in traffic. But the more anger you have and the more you are discharging and living within your body, that means you have unmet sensitivities from childhood and trauma is living in the body. So we have to come in, Dr. Willem Reich's work, I do that. It's orgone, orgonomy, orgone energy, body psychotherapy work that helps to rebuild your character, to help you to restructure your cognition. So when you're angry, avoid, so the best time to have a conversation or a talk with your partner or anyone is when the air is clear. 
when you're not angry or when you're not distressed about something or you don't have anything on your mind, you know, when you, you have to pick that time and place to have that, that conversation. Okay, a few more here for you. Example, when someone's tired or hungry or angry, that's not when you want to have the conversation. You want to pick the right time for that. Because anything that is at a disease in the body can cause an argument. Again, remember, there's always forgiveness. You're going to constantly come back to forgiving and apologizing in any relationship. I don't care how long you've been married, how much you love each other. There's always going to be the forgiveness and the apology that will come and go, will come and go. And it is very normal. Listening. One talks, one listens. The other talks, the other listens. The art of conversation. This is a problem because people talk over each other, on top of each other, or when one talks, the other goes one in one ear and out the other. You must learn to listen with the whole body and focus on the words and the conversation and the feelings that are coming with those words that your beloved or partner or anyone or your colleagues or anyone or your children are sending you, are talking to you about. Apologizing doesn't always mean acceptance. There has to be some other work that goes in there. You want to just continue to anchor your frequencies, uh, keeping all of, you know, the apologizing, the arguing is going to be there, but the, the way to harmony is to anchor, anchoring in the vibration, the frequencies. A long-term relationship is a partnership. Remember, you're a team. This separation stuff where you create this narcissistic triangulation, which would cause, you know, you to separate from each other, like you're separating from your, your pulp, your root. You remember, a long-term exclusive relationship is a partnership. Keeping in mind, you're a team when you're in a relationship. You're a team. Instead of working against each other, work for each other. This is if you're going to go on to the longest term, you know, marriage and that kind of thing. Working together to develop skills and manage the differences of opinion. So learning how to disagree and constructing, learning how to disagree, agree to disagree, uh, which I don't like that statement, agree to disagree. To me, there is no disagreement. It's like what I like and what you like. There is no disagreement. We're all different, remember? That's why w the disharmony comes, because we're all different. The disagreement comes, we're all different. So agree to disagree? No, this is your opinion and this is my opinion. But you have to find, again, meet each other halfway and compromise. Having the harmony is a love energy, folks. And I will leave you on that. Thank you for tuning in to Discover Joyous Love. I'm Anita DeFrancesco. I can be found at tantrawisdom.com. And also I have a true crime book, the DonnaGentileStory.com. You can uh, look for these books, my Live Free book and the DonnaGentileStory.com is a true crime about a woman who was silenced. And you can find all of these on Amazon or inbox me. Thank you for listening here.